right, our friends, welcome back to the Banta Show. And we're in the studio today, and we're joined in the studio, a good old friend of mine, Tommy Gorman. Tommy, how are you? Not too bad, Tommy. And welcome into the studio, Tommy. Thanks very much, it's lovely. And, oh, thanks very much. Uh, Tommy, you're an amazing character. You never cease to amaze me. Now, we've been old friends, and we'll go way back. And we used to we used to have a wee toil now and again with each other, and, you know, buy this and buy that, and, and off each other. That's and right. Whenever stiffed each other. No, we never, no, we never went the wrong road. No, that's one thing. But um, it's it's great to see you and great to welcome you into the studio. Now, Tommy, you, you started up Phoenix Resources. Now, friends, check this out. This is a this is a feel good story in my book. Yes, it's a feel good story. Um, for the benefit of our viewers, Tommy, yeah. um, there was a great write up in the in the Democrat Razor Marty McGuigan. So we'll yes. give Marty a shout there. Um, a wonderful story, and it's about you. You're given opportunities yeah. to young people who would never get the opportunity until you started this this new Phoenix Resources. Will you hear this, friends? So, Tommy, will you give us a bit of background into it? Oh, well, well uh, a good friend of mine asked me about uh, three months ago. He said his son had been um, in prison and um, or in college, as they call it now, uh, and he had been released and he was a bit interested in the stock market. And I've been in stocks and shares for about 40 years. So he asked me would I have a chat with his son because he was very interested in shares. So I said I would. So uh, I went up and I met the young chap at his home. We spent about five hours with his computer uh, explaining my bit of knowledge on the stock market and the shares. And whenever I left him, he seemed to be very contented with uh, what I had been able to show him. So the next morning, his father rang me up to say that it had made a huge impact and difference to his attitude, you know, since he came out, yeah. because he had now seen something that he was really interested in. So I met him twice after that again and sort of progressed him into where he's now trading successfully in the stock market. Brilliant. And when he was back down at the, the prison, um, he was speaking to the governor uh, and he explained to the governor the way I was able to help him to find, you know, yeah. a purpose, uh, you know, outside. So the governor then asked, would I go and have lunch with them, uh, along with the director of um, rehabilitation in Northern Ireland? So uh, we went down and we seen them and they said, you know, that they were very, you know, uh, encouraged with the fact that there'd been such a change in the young man since he had had the conversations with wow. me. And they asked me, would I be able to go into some of the prisons possibly and maybe see, could I do the same for other young people? So I had just finished doing a, um, a program with the Northern Ireland Science Park, whereby we ran a competition around the schools in Northern Ireland um, to see could we select, it was, it was 18 year olds, 15 to 18 year olds that could find, um, you know, say young talent yeah. and bring them forward, yes. you know, with our next business. And it was quite Often successful there. too, it was wasn't it? Very successful. We had 37 new businesses. We had six runners up that we, it was held in the night of celebration in Derry. We had one winner. Wow. And the one winner, we were able to take him to Buckingham Palace. Uh, we were invited to Buckingham Palace with him. We went over to meet Prince Andrew, and Prince Andrew uh, invited him off to America for a trade show. Brilliant. And Absolutely um, brilliant. we had great support as well from uh, you know from the ministers in Stormwood yes. as well to bring them forward. So I'd completed that programme and um, it's now been taken on uh, forward by the Northern Ireland Science Park, which is great. Oh, that's great. You and Jim Finnegan partnered in that, didn't Jim you? Finnegan partnered. Jim from Field Motion, give him a and, shout there. And what it was is uh, Jim was very supportive because at the time, uh, I don't understand technology, I don't understand computers, so I knew that about 70 to 80% of the new business ideas would be technology based. And I says, how am I going to be able to judge these on their merit because I don't understand it? So I asked Jim and uh, I was given a £25,000 prize myself to start some young person in business. And I asked Jim and Jim says, not only will I come in and help you, tell me I've got a path to prize money. Well done, Jim. So, Razor. so Jim put up twelve and a half thousand, and I did the same, and we had our young winners. So yeah, it was very, very successful. So at that time, then, as I say, I had finished that. I got an awful lot of satisfaction in being able to contribute something back. Yeah. And then whenever I got this opportunity, as I say, with the governor, uh, he's a chap called Richard Taylor, and he's a Newry man. Wow. Who's the governor uh, in Hyde Bank, and um, there's also another chap called Brian McCaughey, and he was the director. He's now retired. 
And um, so with that invitation then, I attended a few meetings down in the prisons and I've selected some people who I believe would have a really good future in business. And um, at the moment now, as I say, um, we're sort of just getting organized. We've set up this company, Phoenix Resources, um, just to give it a name. Our model is to give the past, live the present and build the future. Yeah, I love that. Um, that that's a, that, that, that's yeah. a great statement, isn't it? Well, this is it. Uh, I, I actually, um, you know, I was thinking about what you need to do. I mean, most of the people I help, I have no idea what their offense is. Yes. I don't want to know because... I'm going forward, I'm not going backwards. I like your style, yeah. Well, that's what you have to do, you know. Well, that's it. I mean, there's lots of people out there who make mistakes, and it turns out they're actually great people. That's right. So you have to give them all a chance, and that's why I like your style at this one. Well, that's something I mean, you know, if you start looking at the past, what do they do, and then you start being judgmental. Society has judged them, and the courts have, you know, uh, dealt with them, but basically it's a new leaf for these people coming out. And whenever they come out, it's... um, what happens is there's a seventy percent up to a seventy percent reoffending rate because whenever they come out it's very difficult to get work uh, when you do come out and um, so they're more likely to reoffend. If they do get a job a lot of the time it's not a very you know satisfying job. Yeah. It's probably low paid and there's not much job satisfaction, so they're more likely to reoffend. And I thought to myself to try and overcome that, it would be better if they could start their own businesses. Now we're not talking about setting up major businesses yeah. we're talking about I have people who's coming out uh, of one guy who wants to start his own power washing business brilliant and what I do for him is I will provide him with his power wash with the his, his uh, clothes uh, so the know, equipment on, and the safety gear and everything to go whatever with. he needs and I do that yeah. myself because um, if you start looking for grants and you start looking for you know getting other people involved it becomes too long a process, doesn't it? Yeah. So I'm in, in a fortunate position that I can help that person right away. And as soon as they come out, and first of all, you can give them a... It, it'll be a very simple procedure to learn somebody how to use a power wash. It's not yeah. that complicated. Yes. As soon as they come out, you have the equipment for them. They can go out to someone's house a day of power wash, and they're going to get 100, 150 a day, which is 750 a week. When they see they can make that sort of money outside, they're not going to be encouraged to go back to crime indeed so that's the first stage the second stage then is is that uh, the victims of those people who are coming out a lot of the time are old and vulnerable people who've been robbed and burgled yes and if you can address that as well for a lot of them of the old people they get injured uh, which you see in the newspapers they also a lot of them suffer post traumatic stress disorder indeed they, you know some of them have to go and live with relatives they can't go back into their own home some of them have to go into care and some of them unfortunately even die young after before their time and so that's another benefit of actually doing what we're doing. Yeah. And the third stage of it is, is that also the cost of dealing with them. It's uh, 65,000 a year for a junior, 85,000 a year for a senior to be held in custody. You have the court uh, costs, which again could cost anything from 100 to 200,000 in a lot of cases. You've also got the police time and in investigations and foreign billing and the usual. So it's a huge amount of money out of the public purse and that, that money can be saved in the public purse. It can go back into the public purse in relation to providing social care, uh, you know, uh, for the old, it can go into our hospitals and doctors where it can be made better use of. So it's really a three-phase yeah. thing. That's brilliant. And what I was hoping to do as well is I was, while I'm funding this myself, we've now had some inquiries from uh, other institutions who deal uh, not the same as us, but who would actually try and help, uh, you know, people coming out. And they have identified a large number of people who could be helped. Uh, we have, obviously, it's not so much just about the money, it's about the resources in relation to, uh, you know, having the time to mentor these people when they yeah. come out. You just can't get the money, you have to try and mentor them. Yes. It's not alone as a gift, so, I mean, there's no issue that way, but whenever they're great, you do try and help them along. Yeah. So what I have said, you know, uh, is that... We would certainly welcome support from other concerned individuals, other people who want to help, businesses who want to support. If they can help in any way at all, either financially, logistically, technically, you know, uh, anything at all that they can bring to help. And um, so you're you're giving you're you're giving you're you're creating opportunities for people who never get the opportunity to get into business. Let's face it, Tommy. If you if you do the if you do a crime and you paid your debt to society by doing the time, yeah. You get out of, out of jail, the first thing your employer, your, well, you go for an interview and they go, have you ever been in jail? You take that, the employer kind of goes, no. So they've, they've virtually no chance, but you're giving them a chance 
to set up their own business. This is completely different. Well, it's different, but it's also, it's a huge uh, contribution to society in general. I mean, we've got an epidemic of burglaries and crime. Yeah. We have antisocial behaviour, drug addiction, suicides. Uh, you know, we've all these things, and a lot of them, if people had something else to do more constructive and positive in their lives, they wouldn't be doing those things, a lot of them. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, society suffers in a lot of ways, you know, um, and I think that if you can, you know, people are just not really, I don't know whether they're aware of it, you know, but nobody seems to be doing anything about it. Right. Well, that's what I'm getting at. You're the only, you're the very first person that I have ever heard of doing anything like this. Yeah. And friends, this is, this is I want to get, I want to ask you a question, Tommy. Um, I've read, I've read your, your, your article in the local paper, and you're a bit at the end, if anybody wants to get involved or get some, yeah. get in contact, if, even for mentoring or, or financial that's support right. or that's just... Right. General support. That's right. So, did, have you got many people on board with you on this? Unfortunately, no one, no one has, uh, ex, you know, has got in contact at all, which is quite, quite surprising. You know, I thought there'd be more. Well, then we'll put the shout out here in the band of the show. If get involved, there is, there are lots of businessmen. This is this is one of Nuri's top businessmen and personal friend of mine for a long, long time. Oh, long, long time. And yeah. a, a very honourable thing you're doing, Tommy. I have to I have to say it's a yeah. very honourable. So. There are people out there. Get in, get in contact with us here and we can pass on your details to Tommy and, and show you a bit of support for what you're doing. This, yeah. is, this is something different, you know. Well, I'm privileged to be in a position that I've been asked to do it and I'm privileged that I'm able to do it. So, as I say, it's not, I suppose, you know, any credit to me. It's more or less I'm just doing something that really everybody should be doing. You're putting a bit back into society. Well, this is it, you know, as yeah. I say. And the fact of my own upbringing, uh, you know, was was quite difficult when I was young and I know what it's like to be rejected from society and yeah. it's very difficult to integrate whenever that people don't welcome you, you know. So I mean I can understand where a lot of these young people are. They're coming, they're they're fearful, you know, they're, you know, they're lonely. Uh, you know probably they're, frightened too because frightened. they don't know what their what their future holds. They you don't know. know what the future is. And you see what we do is now we're going into the prison actually and we're, you know, uh, preparing them for coming out as well as helping them when they come out. Like, you know, um, I have another particular one and they're looking to start a business outside. And But part of the business is the deep training. So what it is that we're doing is we're going to arrange a course to train them in the area that they want to go into. Which would be, they're coming out, say, in six months. So we will maybe have a four-month course that we pay for in the college. So whenever they come out, we're actually preparing them inside for coming outside. And then whenever they come outside, we'd also assist them afterwards. Wow. So it's not just, you know, giving them a few quid and getting them out and saying, well, that's a good job. Yeah. It's an ongoing thing until they get set up, you know. And that's, I, to, to me, I think that's fantastic. So they're getting a, they're getting a head start before they even get out of jail. Exactly, and yeah. that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. They're not just fired out on the street, right? You've done your time, away you go. Yeah. Uh, and that's where all the trouble, I think. They've, they've no backup, no support. Yeah. It's a wonderful thing you're doing, Tommy. Well, I was thinking as well, you see, people might now, you're thinking, you know, well, these people are criminals that committed crimes, and what about the victims? You're, you're, you know, yeah. you're helping the perpetrators of the crime. Why aren't you helping the victims? I mean, there's a lot of people helping the victims, and it's great to help victims. But, yeah. you know, if these people are not helped, a, you're helping them, but b, you know, the only way that you can stop an awful lot of these offences is to before it starts. So prevention's better than cure. It is indeed. And this is why I think people need to, you know, give more time and resources and thought to the fact that these people need to be helped. You know, uh, you know, it's a sort of if you help them, then you're helping yourself. You are indeed, and it's a better environment for everybody. It's a good knock on effect of you, you get the feel good factor of helping some young, That's and right. hopefully, all them biz- young people get into business, get into it, study hard, work hard on it because you don't just get a business for nothing, not right? Oh, you have to work hard. To work. Tommy, you worked hard all your life, so did I. I did. And we're still working hard. We're still working hard, yeah. <laughs> Still, well, no, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll not go into some of that. We'll leave the rest of it alone, you know. But even even you think, Tommy, back in the day, when when Yuri was just rubble, Hill yeah. Street was rubble. We literally had nothing. We had nothing. No. Literally nothing. That's right. Now there's the internet. There's all this new thing. Yeah. So they have got a slightly better chance of what we had back in the day. They do. Yeah. You know, but and it's great that you're mentoring them and, and, and pushing them on. But you know, I would say to you, Tony, they're not as happy as we were. Three more. Three. We had nothing and we were happy. We had nothing, we were happy. And, and we had the best out of nothing. We had, that's right. Didn't you? Yeah. That's you what know. I'm thinking. So I often wonder at that myself. I think too much is not a good thing either. Yeah. You know, and a lot of the time, too, people don't communicate anymore because it used to be years ago, whenever that, um, say, you know, whenever I was young, whenever the, the dinner was finished, 
the ladies went out the front and they talked to each other. The men were tossing or playing cards and the children were out playing in the street. Now after dinner at night, the young ones are up in their own separate rooms playing the internet. They, They're all they got. Yep, yeah, the parents watching sport, the wife's watching soap. They don't communicate as a unit in the house. Yeah. I've gone out to buy properties and I've wrapped the door to ask, looking for someone, I don't even know who the next door neighbour is, they maybe live together. 10 years and that's the sad thing and the other thing that's more worrying as well is this online shopping I mean that a lot of people were used to have the you know the community in a shopping yeah. environment yeah. they're now shopping online so people are not integrating enough and not communicating enough and I think that's probably contributing to the problem as well I think you're right as a matter of fact you are right that's what I think I've know. seen it myself I've yeah. actually seen it myself and I've, I've kids so yeah. they come home and they're just the first thing they do just get yeah. onto the tablet or the phone yeah. or something I was walking know? down Hill Street one day and I was walking past Boyd's store and I see that chap used to go to school I haven't seen him this year and he said well how are you keeping and he just looked at me do you know he says the first man has talked to me he says in about four weeks I've been standing here he says I stand here in the morning for he says people don't talk to you anymore yes he said to me I just so believable and it just brought it oh. home to me he's right because it, it never struck but me but you knew back in the day back in the day you walked down Hill Street you knew everybody everybody, everybody and you're yeah. waving all over That's the place yeah. oh, how you doing yeah. and you walk down you, you probably see about 10 people you know now and you even know? you know a lot of times you see people you know they're rushing to a beat and having time to talk to you that's right that's, that's right. a sad thing it is sad he's got too fast hasn't it too fast and I mean it's just you know it's you know, you, they're gaining, but they're also losing a lot. They are, they you are. Know. And the internet's a lot to do with it, hasn't it? Well, the internet's good in a it's sense, good. but it's got its place in society, and I think maybe in some cases it's maybe not been, you know, properly, you know... Probably administered. Properly administered, by the word. Well, know. Tommy, forgive the past, live the present, and build the future. That's a, that's a great business well, acumen there. I love that. Well, even that for it's Northern Ireland. For, for everybody who's went through the troubles and everything. Yeah, like, I mean, that's it. Yeah. You know, Stormont. That should be our motto. That should be our mod. That should, should be up to Stormont. Yeah. On that note, Tommy, Tommy O'Gorman, my old buddy, my old pal, Tommy. Thanks for coming in to talk to us. Well, it's been, been an ab- absolute pleasure, yeah. and, and I wish you well. And the, get in contact if you, if we can do anything for you oh, in, in this program. So it's it's I commend you on it. I absolutely commend you on what you're doing. Well, you're the only good. person doing it. So friends, anybody out there, business people in the community, get in contact with us. And we can pass your details on to Tommy if you're if you're willing to help out at any stage. That'd be great, yeah. And uh, so for me and Tommy, raise our friends. We're out of here. Good man, Tommy. Absolutely pleasure, Tommy. See you here.